Hey, howdy, hello, and welcome to the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Steam Red Light series, the series where we look at Steam's most lowly and controversially rated games to see if they're as bad as the internet says they are. I'm your host for the day, Smirk. Today's game is called Artificer, Science of Magic, and was released on September 10th, 2020. It was developed by Psilocybe Games and published by Games Operators. It currently has 15 reviews, with roughly 66% of the reviews being positive. Now, I realize up to this point I've been covering mostly negative games, but this show occasionally will cover games that have mixed status because, well, they're, they're controversial. So this game is a survival craft game, uh, which is kind of similar to Don't Starve. At the start of the game, the game offers you a casual mode where you respawn upon death, or an adventure mode where when you die, you have to start all the way over. You take the role of an uncustomizable character that crash lands on a planet as humanity's second attempt to investigate a distant planet that shows signs of life. Once your less than ideal landing is completed, you're accompanied by your only known companion, a talking dog, which helps ease you into the first few minutes of the game. And when I say few, I mean a few, because the game mostly cuts you loose and you're on your own with some loose idea of what objective you should complete. Since it's a crafting game, you pick up resources by using the means you have, whether it's by axe, pick, or even by hand. You gather the resources you need to complete recipes that will help further your capabilities to continue exploring the planet of Alcor. And this is the core gameplay loop based on my experience. You discover sources for materials, pursue research for tech, use the materials and research to ultimately build new components. Now that we've covered the craft portion, I will speak to the survival side. Your two resources you have to manage are health and sanity. During my short 2.7 hour playthrough, I never had to manage sanity, only my health. There are plenty of things in the game that want to kill you, but no other resources that need to be managed such as hunger, thirst, energy, or temperature. And now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about what makes the game good. So the thing that stood out to me the most while being the most consistent is that the music in the game is pretty great. It fits in most positions and circumstances, and I'm genuinely pretty excited when a new track I haven't heard comes on. In addition to the music, I found myself appreciating some of the minigame elements that are introduced when you research new trees. When you research a tree, you have to play a minigame that, so far in my experience, consists of either Match 2 or Mastermind. Those games cost research points, which you accumulate when you discover new life, points of interest, or survive a night successfully. There's another minigame found when smithing in the forge, which is dragging the appropriate tool onto a 3x3 square when prompted. The better you perform, the better your crafted tool is. The third thing that I found myself enjoying is the design of the planet and its life. I'm typically excited to experience the visual brain children of artists, and I thought that while some of the predator designs weren't exactly exciting, I did think that some of the flora designs were pretty interesting. For example, there's this plant that robs your sight when you get close to it, and when I encountered that for the first time, I, I thought that was pretty cool. Lastly, the dog curses, and you can also pet them. And now that we've covered the good, let's cover the not so good. The most glaring problem that is also reiterated in other reviews is that if it's not the end goal that's ambiguous, it's the means to get there that proves puzzling. The journal of the player character keeps track of your objectives, thankfully, but getting from point A to point D leaves the player to discover B and C naturally. This was a pretty big problem for me because there was an item, a whaleworm scale, that I needed to develop a knife in order to harvest materials from certain mobs and flora. I expected to be able to get this from whaleworms, but killing them with an axe and spear had given me no such drop. I explored many different places, even breaking my way into the mountain biome and starting the blacksmithing tree, completely by accident, all before finding the scale. By the time I concluded my playthrough, I still had not found a way to harvest whaleworm scales. As an unintended side effect, this lack of scale also meant I couldn't build storage crates, so I just dropped my shit on the ground since it doesn't seem to despawn. And modern problems require modern solutions. The second biggest problem for me is that the AI is mostly non-threatening. You run faster than almost every mob I had run into, except the bees. What is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! You can also easily manipulate most enemies to get them stuck on terrain in order to harvest materials. Healing is also incredibly quick. While I wasn't able to craft medkits, I could craft bandages out of materials that were plentiful. These bandages heal 10 health immediately, and because you run faster than so many threats, there's very little chance of them catching up to you for the half second you have to apply the bandage. When I realized that enemies didn't move faster at night, or even behaved any differently, I no longer was afraid to leave my settlement at night. Lastly, the third problem I had encountered in the game was just overall in regards to the amount of bugs or questionable in-game experiences I had, either gameplay related or aesthetically related. I'll list out all the short ones that I had found notable, but is not all of the bugs I had experienced in the game. Tooltips layer over the settings menu. 
There's this loud, unbalanced sound that is substantially louder than the rest of the game. There's no way to turn off the campfire to preserve fuel. On the flip side, your kiln turns off if you go into your tent. Also, is, is there a point to the tent other than being a place to put stuff? The kiln only turns on if it's going to produce a result. This led me to believe that I was using the kiln incorrectly for a while until I figured this out. Moving my communicator into my inventory, with it in focus, causes it to continuously be displayed in the top right hand corner. The textures in the mountain mines are pretty screwed up. You can even walk behind some of them in some places. Don't go that way. Never go that way. Oh, thanks. Which ends up eating materials if you mine in front of them. Oh my god. I mined that rock and there's nothing here. What the hell? There was this one specific dungeon I was in where I took damage I genuinely could not see the number of because it was gray, which was also against the backdrop of a very gray environment. The most persistent bug that had tested my patience was that when I would drag items over to my kiln or campfire, occasionally my mouse path would drag my cursor over the entrance to the tent. The game mistook this as a request for me to enter my tent, so it would typically have me enter and either cause my kiln or campfire to glitch for a moment, once generating an unobtrusive error message. Even though this happened a handful of times, it wasn't until near the end of my gameplay run that I finally realized what was causing the problem. So something kind of annoying in addition is that you can't disassemble your tent in case that's what you wanted to do to try to fix this problem. You can disassemble just about everything else, but you can't move your tent. So if I want to fix this myself, I'll have to move my kiln and campfire a bit further away from my tent, or move my crafting stations into the tent. So this is player solvable, but it is kind of wacky that environmental requests are being interpreted through the UI. So now that we've talked about the good and the less than good, it's time for the verdict. The game has great music. Some research and crafting gameplay elements are innovative and occasionally challenging. Some of the planet designs are unique and refreshing. Some journey points are punishingly difficult to discover. The AI is incredibly non-threatening, and there's a good amount of bugs, some even wasting gameplay time. Currently, with all things considered, I do not recommend Artificer, Science of Magic. The game just needs a little bit of work on it, and then after a re-review, this could absolutely be flipped into a positive review. I have a good feeling that some of the things I talked about may eventually be updated in future patches. Uh, the developer is pretty active on negative review threads, and they even say a new patch is supposed to come out on Wednesday, September 16th. So we'll see if things change in the future, either near or far. And that's all the time we've got for today, he says, as if he develops videos with duration in mind. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Uh, share the video with friends and fam if you like the shade of light I shed on thee. Comment your thoughts on whether or not you agree or disagree with some of the things I said, or if you just want to say hello, those are always welcome. Lastly, subscribe to the channel if you couldn't shirk the smirk, and maybe I'll see you next week. I never built that, uh, that fire, so I guess I'll just, I'll just run around for a little bit.